Welcome back, Team 201. I'm glad you have still with me and have reached this video to watch. Perhaps it's the eagerness of the start of a new year, but well done for sticking with it. We're finally getting to the real meat of accounting now, and you've been probably itching to start writing things and doing sums, because that's sort of what school indoctrinates you to being accounting about. All this other stuff about qualitative, useful information, I think many people just assume that we just give the information that we get told to give the information. But you're not bookkeepers anymore. You've moved away from that. You're making decisions about communicating information about a business to stakeholders. And that's a big distinction now from the bookkeeper that you might have been at school level. So we have been summarizing things with this piece of paper of ours. And we finally wrote on it in the last video of the series where we decided what the reporting entity was that we were going to be reporting on. And remember now, whenever I do something on this piece of paper, the decisions I make are all to get to the ultimate goal of giving useful information. And I achieve that with the qualitative characteristics. So let's move into the next step now, because I know you're itching to start doing accounting. Um, which you have the whole way along, but habits are hard to break. So let's keep moving forward. When you want to now put a journal on that piece of paper that we've been looking at, you're going to now be considering the elements of financial reporting, the elements of financial accounting. And those you will know are assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expenses. Those are, are the things that we use in the journal entries to debit and to credit. So the first one that you generally encounter is an asset definition. The asset generally, we, we have this fancy way of saying, has conceptual primacy. That's sort of where our whole thinking in terms of classification and accounting starts. I want to pause there and just mention the word classification again. It's something that you'll, you must start thinking of in terms of in The Lion King. There's the one scene where the hyenas are in, in this dark world, and, and one of the hyenas says, Mufasa, and the others go, Ooh. If you haven't seen that scene, go look for it on YouTube. I'm sure you'll find it. But I've done my best impersonation of that. Now, classification is one of those words in accounting. When you see it, you go, Ooh. And you need to remember that when I say the words classification to you, what I'm meaning is, what element is this? Is it an asset? Is it a liability? Is it equity, income, or an expense? So you'll see on the screen now in front of you, there's old definitions of assets and new definitions of assets. And the old ones come from as far back as 1989 in that old framework. Now, you're probably wondering, why am I giving you both if there's a new one? And I'll come to that in a moment. But let's just have a look at both of them first. So the previous definition of an asset was a resource controlled by the entity as a result of past events and from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the entity. I think you'll be familiar with that definition and you can spend some time on your own reading through it. The ISB over time realized that that wasn't really capturing what they feel should be an asset in all the instances. As the world's grown and the economies have become more complex and industry more complex, they've sometimes battled in their deliberations and setting other standards to apply this definition. So they've come to a point now where they've given us a new definition. And it was not them imparting it on us. There was the due process that I've previously spoken about. And this is now collectively what we as a financial reporting community in the world has come to in terms of the definition of an asset. So that definition reads now a present economic resource controlled by the entity as a result of past events. Very similar to the previous one but they've split out that flow of a future economic benefits because they've now decided that that shouldn't make it not be an asset because there might not be a flow in future. And you can read about that in the framework itself. Then what they've gone in on is to this term economic resource. They've actually given an extra definition now. So you're defining the asset with two definitions, that first one that we've read and then an economic resource is a right that has the potential to produce economic benefits. And this is then explained in more detail in the framework. And I won't put you to sleep now with going through all of that. Read through the section slowly in the framework, and you'll see how they explain this. And then have a look at some of the old questions in your question pack, how we apply this. 
So that's dealing with the assets, which I've mentioned has conceptual primacy. That doesn't mean assets are more important than anything else. It's just the place we start. The next thing we're going to look at, which is a primary element as well, is liabilities. Now, liabilities had a definition in the 1989 framework as a present obligation of the entity arising from past events, the settlement of which is expected to result in an outflow from the entity of resources embodying economic benefits. So again, they've tweaked that slightly. And it now reads a present obligation of the entity to transfer an economic resource as a result of past events. Then they say an obligation. So now they've also got two definitions. An obligation is a duty or responsibility that the entity has no practical ability to avoid. So in the past where we had one definition for both of these primary elements, there are now two that you need to go and have a look at. Now, this is quite important, and I'm not sure in a video how to make sure that everybody stops at this point and hears what I'm going to say now. So spread the word amongst your classmates if they, they got bored of me up to this point and haven't heard this. But, but here's an important point, and it's going to help you read the framework. They say there in the definition of a liability, a present obligation of the entity to transfer an economic resource. They've defined economic resource. That's in your definition of an asset. So if you are discussing a liability and you're trying to consider whether something should be classified as a liability, there's a component of the asset definition you're going to have to give as well. So don't forget that in your reading of this. Make a note for yourself with a liability, those two words, economic resource, they've been defined for you in the asset section. Right, then you might be wondering now, two frameworks, my word, what's that all about? Why is he giving it to both of us? I mean, we don't want to know about yesterday when we've moved forward ahead and changed and improved. Remember, your frameworks underlie a setting of standards. So all the standards that were set before the new framework were based on the 1989 framework. So if you are studying IS2, for example, the inventory standard, that was also written in the late 1980s. If you're going to try and interpret that standard by looking through the lens of the modern framework, you might have some challenges and you might get to different answers and think, but what was the board doing? But remember, the board that set IS2 at that time, they were sitting with the 1989 framework. So it's important that you have an awareness of both and that you know when standards were set so that you know which conceptual framework they were using as their frame of reference at the time of setting those standards. Then in terms of your academic purposes this year, we'll focus for theory questions on the framework, we'll really focus on the new framework. Because if you're going to be setting an accounting policy moving forward for something that a standard does not exist for, you're going to need to use the new framework. So you need to be very proficient in it. But that said, as we move through the year, we're going to look at older standards and awareness of what is in the 89 framework and what might differ from the current one is important to help you understand it. And we will try and highlight it during the year, reminding you of this standard, when was it set, what's the implication of that. So have a good general awareness of the older framework, just especially what is different, that when you need to go and look in the old one, you know when to go. But the detail, you really need to then focus on the new conceptual framework. 